Big talk, but nothing to show for. In 2017, President Kufando vowed to put his presidency on the line to stop the practice of illegal mining. I am prepared to put my presidency on the line on this matter. <laughs> this is a choice that all of us have to make as human beings. You do what you think is right, or do you do what you think will allow you to get along? I think that you do what you think is right. That is what you're required to do. But today, the situation is worse than ever. Gambase's grip on Ghana has tightened, contaminating 13 major water bodies, including rivers Pra, Oti, Ofin, Tano, and Ancobra. And the consequences are dire. Five bed deformities reported in Galamse communities, destruction of 3.5% of agricultural land, particularly 4,760 hectares of land, which can be likened to the entire size of the Great Accra region, and the destruction of 19,000 hectares of cocoa farms, comparable to the size of Kofudria. Currently, eight out of 10 chronic kidney diseases are from Galamse communities. And recent data also suggests that 24,000 cancer cases are recorded annually, partly due to Galamse. The list goes on and on, and the devastating reality of Ghana's illegal mining menace has left many disappointed. We are not winning the fight against the government. Most of the presidents who come in power we promise to fight against these things, but they themselves they end up engaging in those things. They cannot stop it, all because they need money. It's involved money. It's all about money. So when something is involved with money, people don't care what is destroying. The question then remains, is government really committed to fighting the menace? Well, let's take you a few years back. In 2017, the Ghanaian government launched a crackdown on Galamse, seasoned excavators and other equipment from illegal mining sites. However, two years after, it emerged that many of these seized excavators had gone missing. This sparked allegations of corruption and collusion among government officials, leading to a series of investigations and implicated officials. Not forgetting the explosive Anasa Rimiao Anasa's documentary titled Galamse Fraud in 2018, which exposed widespread corruption, environmental degradation, and human exploitation in the mining sector. And as is always the case, a number of government officials were again implicated. Fast forward to the year 2021, Lance Minister Samuel Abujanapo, in the second phase of the crackdown, made the promise to burn excavators that were seized. Article 36 of the Constitution gives a duty to the government to protect the environment for posterity. So in that case, Government simply has to act. And although that was done, Galamse still remains a major challenge. But in all this, many believed Galamse and its effects were safe for communities outside Greater Accra region and other regions until a shocking announcement by the Ghana Water Company. Its warning of a looming water crisis due to Galamse's destructive path has reignited the debate. According to the company, a 600% rise in turbidity has led to the loss of 50% of treated water. And if Ghana does not overturn the situation as a matter of urgency, it may need to import water by the year 2030. Shocking, right? Well, today, labor unions, media coalitions, and concerned citizens are sounding the alarm. And the calls are growing louder for the declaration of a state of emergency and, among others, a ban on all forms of mining. An order to halt all forms of mining that are legal or illegal in forest reserves and around water bodies. You cross us, we will roll over you, we will crush you. This Galamse menace has not got any political color. It's our, ourselves, we the people, we are going to suffer. The president sworn an oath to protect our lives and protect all of us. Today, the call is that, President, you must live up to your constitutional obligation, a state of emergency. After destroying this one, then we ask the children when they come to school, say so we give them one nutritious meal. Which meal can restore something that mercury has damaged? We are giving His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Ghana, up to the ending of this month. But not everyone agrees. Lance Minister Samuel Abujinapo 
says such a call is draconian. Declare a state of emergency that is within the bosom of the president, but I find that to be a far-reaching, um, really a, a very draconian measure to take. For many, it seems government is now unable to put a clear stance on the menace with counter accusations and counter comparisons. I was expecting them to have condemned the statement made by His Excellency, the former president, Mahama, before even calling for this action. Because you, just, you can't just, you know, in a way, uh, out of the blue, you just say, put a ban. Ban on what? What are the metrics? What have you done? What analysis have you done? President of the National House of Chiefs, Ojia Hokwo Yao Jipi, is also kicking against the ban on mining in the country and rather called for responsible mining. Well, as Kalam say ravages Ghana, the human costs mounts. Communities are suffering, the environment is degraded, and the future hangs in the balance. And with government seeming dilemma, it remains to be known what will be done to eradicate the menace. But can Ghana afford to wait? Clock is ticking.